Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I just wanted to, I guess, talk about a subject um, that came up on After Sounds uh, stream earlier this morning, talking with Darkest Night. And I know it wasn't gone into a lot of details, but I did get some questions um, via Discord, and I figured I would maybe give my take on the topic. And the topic of this video, we'll just call it uh, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. And for all of those who grew up, I guess that would be early 2000s, uh, late 90s, little TLC reference there for you. Go ahead and look it up if you're uh, a youngster. But uh, uh, basically the, the topic that was brought up was recently in the market, there were a number of cards um, if you watch Twitter for Splinterlands or anything like that, where the uh, the rental rates spiked um, from like 0.1 DEC a day to over like 24, 25 DEC a day. And as such, the card prices mooned as well for a period of time. And I wanted to address the topic more as a consumer warning, not not saying that anything nefarious is necessarily happening happening out there. But I do think it, it makes sense to understand not only the rental market, but also the card market, the volumes, the order book, and to like the title of this uh, screen shows, you know, don't go chasing waterfalls, right? Don't go chasing APRs and APYs that are here today that could be gone tomorrow, and don't sink investments in, you know, say assets that have um, FOMO'd up in price. Uh, assuming that that is going to be the case forevermore. So let me, I guess, show you a couple things that will be interesting to look at. We'll just look at one card in this example. The one in question was the revealer here. Uh, this is courtesy of Peak Monsters. You can see here the revealer has card listings here at 29 cents right now as openly available on the market. But if you look at the history here, you can see that, let's say, 11 days ago, um, revealers were selling for 0.108 cents. If we look at the volume 11 days ago as an example, 782 revealers were sold for 0.108 cents. Let's just pull up a calculator here and let me show you some of this. So if we have 0.108 times 11 days ago, the volume. So if you bought um, 11 days at 0.08, there were 782 of those. Let's say you bought everything 11 days ago on revealers. You spent $84.46 roughly. Well, what happened is the rent prices went a little crazy, and I, I'll have a hypothesis there we'll talk about in just a second, but bear with me, let's just look at the data. So four days ago, the prices of the revealers on the market spiked to almost five cents. So 0.488 cents, almost a 5x in value. So let's go ahead and create another calculator here. So the price of revealers on the market were selling for 0.488. And you can look at here at four days ago, the volume, the volume, strangely enough, was 763. So right around the same volume as 11 days ago. So if we times this by 763, you can see here the cost of those revealers if you bought them 11 days ago was about $84.46. If you sold those revealers after the rental uh, market spike uh, five days ago and you sold it on the fourth day, you would have sold those same revealers roughly for $372.34. So if we subtract the, uh, the sales versus the cost here, you can see here that the profit, if you did this, would be roughly $287.89 which is not bad. And uh, what, what I think personally happened in this particular case is that let's say a bot farm or two came online for, you know, let's say 10,000 bots, 7,000 bots, somewhere around that line. And they all had the algorithm to say, hey, go rent me a level one or a 1B6 revealer as part of my uh, rentals. And if you have, let's say 7,000 bots, come online on one instance and rent 7,000 cards, uh, well, that's going to obviously you know, make the market move. And if we look at the card rentals here, just to show you an idea of what could have happened, this is the current rental market for revealers. 
And you can see here, uh, starting here, we have one BCX revealers here for rent, and it shows there's 7,058 more revealers for rent at one BCX. So if a bot farm, let's just say a bot farm of 7,060 uh, bots came online, all rented revealers, what would the price be? Well, there'd be no 1B6 revealers on the market. And look at the rental prices of what's going right now. The rental price right now is, uh, let's say, 1.372 DEC, which is actually 0 0.001 cents. So look what would have to happen for this market book to be totally absorbed. If we take, in this example here, if we take uh, 7,060 revealers on the market, and it's 1.372 DEC to rent those. Well, it's actually 0 0.001. So I could rent the entire market and sweep the floor here on the rental markets for revealers for $7.06. And now there's no revealers on the market. And now people start going crazy, start listing their revealers for you know 5 DEC, then 10 DEC, then 15 DEC, then 24 DEC, because, well, there's no revealers uh, to rent. The whole market's been uh, swept up by it for $7.06. So what's the lesson here? Is yeah, Bot Farm can do that and rent everything out for $7. People could FOMO in and start renting stuff for 24 DEC or whatever and be like, oh my gosh, this is the next money maker in Splendorlands. And then go buy some revealers on the market you know, for whatever, what's the market value here today? They go in to buy the market for 29 cents, buy a bunch of these, start renting them out. Now people start selling them again for, for 40 cents, 50 cents or whatever. So again, the, the point of this is, you know, don't go chasing waterfalls for rentals on APRs and APYs. This stuff changes so fast. You know, just less than 10 days ago, the rental market was in the dumps. You couldn't even rent anything out for 0.1 DEC. It recovered with some bot farms, again, scooping up a lot of cards and turn the market around. We'll see how, how long it lasts, but unless you have something sustainable where, you know, there's not a lot of revealers on the market and there's a huge demand for players to rent them, there's not really a, a, a reason to go FOMO in and buy a bunch and give profits to those who might have scooped them up earlier in mass and just unloading them on you and basically uh, marking up the price. Again, don't, don't go chasing those waterfalls or those APRs. So that's my lesson. Just be aware of that the Splinterlands market for rentals and even the cards is relatively thin in the grand scheme of things. Again, if I wanted like a, a max level revealer here is 46 BCX. If I wanted to went into the market right now and bought a max level revealer regular foil, um, well, I have to go to the one BCXs here, but I'm basically there's like a, I think it's 50 per page. So basically I'm going to wipe out this page and half of this page here in um, Peak Monsters. So I'm going to move the price of revealers up to 40 cents just by one person maxing out a revealer all at once. So be aware the market depth and, and don't be, don't be fooled. Don't go chasing those waterfalls, make smart decisions. You know, the other thing to realize if we look at one other piece of data here, if we look at the print rate on the revealer, only 13.51% of revealers have been printed. There's been roughly, if you look at this number, 108,000 BCX printed. There's gonna be another, uh, what's the math here? 86.49% uh, that's gonna be printed here for revealers. So. Don't be rushing out there buying these necessarily, hoping you're going to rent them and make your money back overnight. Um, you know, be, be a good consumer and don't chase those waterfalls again. Is this the first time this has happened? No. Will it be the last time it'll happen? Probably not. There are, you know, um, possibly malicious or let's say not even malicious. There could be possible whales coming into the game either they're here already they could be in the future doing these kind of market moves again going in here buying the floor on something doing something you know renting for seven dollars and then selling and making in this case you know three hundred dollars in profit uh, don't don't be the mark here um, make sure you're making educated decisions and you know don't FOMO in to these type of situations that's my lesson here for today that's my comments 
on what might have happened in the last couple of days. Again, not pointing any fingers. I don't know what happened. It's probably just bots doing what bots do. No specific malicious intent. They're just renting out cards and you know, humans went and did some, some crazy stuff in return. So, so let me know in the comments below if uh, this type of information is helpful for you. Um, also, just a, a quick note as well. We do have a members only section here on YouTube and information like this from a timely basis perspective will go out first to members. Uh, so if you want to be a, a member of the channel, feel free to look at those options that are available there. In addition to getting access to uh, the latest and greatest Splinterlands content first, uh, you also get access to um, myself via AMAs and um, uh, private uh, sessions here through weekly, monthly, and uh, semi-private sessions as well, depending on the membership level. So if that's of something that would be of interest to you, feel free to check that out on YouTube. And until next time, keep stacking those stats. Stats,